comic books, movies, TV, and more. Nerds are everywhere. It's time to assemble! It's Nerds United! Hello and welcome to a brand new Nerds United Live on Facebook, on YouTube. I'm your host, Greg Mahochko. That's the co-host of the year old Captain Crunch himself, Mike Luther. Hello, Mike. Well, hello, kind sir. How's it going with you? Oh, I just, you know, running around like a chick with my head cut off. Yep, understandable. Understandable, yeah. Better than uh, other parts being cut off, I suppose. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, good. That's what I like to hear. How, yeah. how, how has your week been? Uh, week has been fine. Uh, just, you know, usual stuff, work, gym, reading, video games, uh, doing stuff like that. No, nothing, nothing, nothing too crazy. Nothing too watching anything, maybe. I uh, started re-watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I don't know if I'll watch all of it, but I was just bored and wanted something um, on. There's Oh, I mean, X-Men 97 I'm caught up on. I think that's about it, really. What about you? I've been watching a lot. In fact, I've been watching so much uh, that I had to start keeping a list so that I'd remember everything I, I watched. <laughs> so, uh, like you, I've been uh, all up to date on X-Men 97. Uh, and we'll talk about that here uh, as we go along because there were a couple of little cameos, Mike. I don't know if you caught. Uh, yes. So, um and I don't know, I guess we can just jump right into it. I don't see why not. Yeah, well, um, but, and, and it'll help clear out some of the things that I've, I've been doing a lot of prep work for this show, Mike. So excellent. Um, uh, that being said, let's let's can we welcome our our esteemed guests and, sure. and viewers, I should say. Uh, so we have a, a, a regular. He's a great guy. And uh, that is Fred Sacco, who says, by the way, I said this. An hour ago, he said, first, suck it, Josh. I've been drinking since one o'clock. Good luck, panel. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. And then he says, just a minute ago, back Greg and Mike Crunch. I need to work on that second name, but I'll get there. <laughs> it's 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 not bad. Not bad. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it, it's all good. I don't even know if Josh is going to be here tonight. Uh, well. Because Josh, I feel like he's, you know, pre otherwise preoccupied or something. I don't know. He doesn't that's, have well, dedication okay. like Fred. He'll he'll watch it later. That's fine. Or or if, not. Who knows? If it's anything like his his recent listening to the show is mm -hmm. seven, eight months down the line. <laughs> right, right. So um <laughs> Fred says, Don't prep for ground out. Don't let Thursday ruin you. No schedules or format. I don't want to know, know so much if I have a, not so much a format, but since this is now a visual medium, we have visual aids. Yes. Uh so let's just kind of Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> How many times can I say yeah? <laughs> Ten seconds, man. Um, X-Men 97, Disney Plus, episode five was this week. And it saw uh, the X-Men mutants, most of them anyway, going to Genosha, uh, which is a haven, safe haven, they think, uh, for mutant kind. And while they're uh, being walked around, and um, I don't want to say escorted around because that'll trigger Fred to comment something uh, wildly inappropriate, but also hilarious. Uh, but they're giving, being given a tour by Nightcrawler. And you see in the background, and I recognize this character right away. Uh, and you see in, in the hoodie and the backpack and the, the knit cap there, that's Leech, who was in, I think, season one. All the way back in 92 or 93, he was a Morlock. But behind him is Glob Herman. You can see his skeleton. You can see his uh, organs. But he has this uh, Glob-like, I guess, <laughs> uh, exterior. But what's really freaky about uh, Glob Herman, it, and I found this because I, I was doing a fair bit of, of uh, preparation. Sorry, Fred. <laughs> For the show, uh, everything is where you think it would be anatomically, except the eyes. His eyeballs are not in the sockets; they are out at the surface, 
So you see like the optic nerves, <laughs> they kind of stretch into his skull. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, it just, it's weird to look at. I don't, I'm, I'm staring at it right now and I don't like staring <laughs> at it. Uh, I'll, I'll I, say I, this did notice, I did notice him in the show and mm -hmm. I, I, I was like, that guy looks familiar from something and I had no clue what it was from. They, like it was somewhere in my memory. You're welcome. Um, it, and in, in looking for an image, cause I'm like, I, I couldn't remember Glob Herman's name. So I had to do like pink blob X-Men guy. <laughs> so like, yeah. That's the internet would tell me what, where I, where I needed to be. Uh, but in following up that search, you know, and I was trying to find uh, maybe a comic book picture of Glob Herman. And I came across this and one of the, I guess lightest, funniest moments of the original Avengers movie, which was what, 2014, I feel like, yeah. um, was at the end when uh, Hulk and Thor are there and, you know, they just kind of put Loki in his place and, and, uh, uh, you know, Thor makes a, a comment and Hulk goes bash and, <laughs> you know, him in the side. So with, they mirrored that scene in this, you know, back-to-back -back frame uh, from comics. So uh, <laughs> I, I just had to, uh, to chuckle. Um, uh, <laughs> so Fred, Fred, with a callback from uh, the, the Five Heart Podcast, where uh, I was told that I shouldn't be cold because I have plenty of insulation. Uh <laughs> Fred says that uh, uh, Glob Herman built like one of us fat ass Midwesterners who don't get cold because we're fat. <laughs> I, you know what? The, the the more weight I put on, the the less I get cold. I'll be honest with you. Well, that's, it's 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 just true for me. That uh, uh, that stems from a, a conversation from last week where we we're talking about uh, being at the Cardinal game. I'm like, yeah, it was kind of cold at the Cardinal game because it was in the forties. So. Um, there is no, not a cold I have experienced colder than when we went to Nebraska. No, no, we, not, we didn't go to Nebraska, but we went to the Nebraska game at mm -hmm. Illini. Right. That's the coldest I've ever experienced. Really? And, and, like and that's not that cold. And well, it wasn't cold for you because you were going to stick it out no matter what. The, yeah, because I'm insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. No Greg sleep, can... freezing cold. Greg, Greg, Greg will stay up until eleven o'clock or later. As long as <laughs> as long as Nebraska's playing. Yeah, that's right. There are um, there are certain parameters that are going to really uh, maintain my interest. Yeah. Um, Fred says that's great. The glob punched your typical Kotaku writer, and I gotta say, when I see somebody with that haircut, I do kind of want to punch him. <laughs> um. But then we have uh, uh, The View with Drew, who is here with us tonight. Hello, uh, everyone. What's up? What's up with hello, you, Hello, hello. And uh, hey, a little plug for uh, The View with Drew. Excellent news. The channel, The View with Drew, is now 895 subscribers, not too far from 900. Well, I will have you know, The View with Drew, we are not too far from 70. So <laughs> yeah. tell everybody and you know. If we do this for another 10 years, we might get 75. That's, I would like to think that in 10 years we could be at a 150. No, so. that, I really wouldn't think so, honestly. No, <laughs> what well, not even exaggerating. No, <laughs> but wait, we got two in the last month now. Grant, one of them's Fred, and that's not a knock on Fred, but like Fred's been here, he's he's been a regular. Um, but that's pretty awesome. No, another call back to the Fred, you might have to hold on to some of these five heart references, they're not. They're not. They're only landing with me and Josh. If he weren't such a bum, we're here. Um, but Josh is a bum who also has a family. So, um, all right. So then anyway, that's one of the uh, cameos we saw in um, uh, this week's episode of X Men ninety seven. Did you catch Mike the other one? I heard there was an agent of some sort. I don't think we're talking about the same one. Okay, never mind then. What, we, what, you might be wrong. Tell, I want to hear more about that. Um, in fact, tell me more about that. No, I just I just heard there was uh, something like that was Agent Spider or something like that, or Spider Agent. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Or hear that. But I, when I was watching it uh, yesterday, 
I had to pause. I said, well, that figure looks familiar. Let me see if this one is, you know, familiar to you, Mike. This is when they, there was right before the big party on Genosha or in Genosha, I should say. Uh, does that, can you make out that figure there? That Yoda? No. <laughs> It's kind of, kind of looks like Yoda. a little bit like you know, like the ear. Oh, I'm, I'm pointing. You guys can't see where I'm pointing at. Obviously. Sure, sure. But like, it looks a little bit like the ear there. Let me let me bring in another image that I you know do picture in picture on this because that's how we're making this happen. Oh, okay. Watch me. The, that's the watcher. Watcher. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So you can see like the back of his cape. Uh. You know, collar there. Um. And kind of looks like it's the what if watcher by the way i just looked it up um the agent spider was not in x-men 97 it was in a different show that i haven't watched yet that we both watch that sees the second part of season two is out now on prime oh, oh, oh invincible yeah yes um yeah. i have I've, we haven't talked about that yet no um but we also haven't watched it yet. I was so. gonna say I haven't gone back and watched it. I just saw like headline for it. Uh let's see. Fred uh thinks that uh, Watcher, Uatu, <laughs> says looks like the flash before Iris cut his dick off season three or so in the first picture. So <laughs> that's hey, that's, season season three is the last good season of the flash, I'll tell you that much right that, now. That's when it started to all kind of fall apart, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was all in X Men uh, ninety seven, uh, which again uh, we watched and and have, are up to speed on. Sp I guess spoiler alert, since it's only been out you know a couple of days, but that ending was pretty uh, crazy. A couple of heavy hitters uh, going down. Yeah, I'm trying to not be too specific for people who uh, you know. Everyone um, is no more. So everything they're all the show, the show ended. It's like uh, you've seen the Mission Impossible movies. Yes, of course. The first one um, oh. uh, when they're in, uh, I don't think maybe Bucharest or Poland or something like yeah. that. Uh, that first mission where Emilio Estevez's character gets killed, like where everybody essentially gets killed off. And uh, um, Ethan, he, he's on the phone. He's like, they're dead. They're dead. They're all dead. And that's kind of what it was like yes. for, for this. So you know what, by um, the way, I'm I'm still waiting for that Emilio Estevez character to come back somehow. I, that'd be quite the hey, if they didn't specifically show it on screen and they came very close. Look, they can do anything in Mission Impossible movies. You know, he comes back, he's wearing an eye patch. They talked about how they used nanobites to heal the spring. I mean, they they did that in um was the movie with uh Taron Egerton. Oh, Kingsman. Kingsman. They did it with, you or know. Kingsman 2, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Kingsman 2, where somebody gets shot in, in the face, like in the eye, and then he's comes back because they have technology. So they can do it in Mission Impossible. Let's let's go. Let's get Emilio Estevez back. I, yeah, it's only been 30 years since that movie, I think. You know, he's I, probably he's at still, the peak of his game. He say he can still act, I think. <laughs> or at least he can take well, some lines. No, I mean, know. I'm not saying he can. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, though. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as the Flash, Fred says uh, it made it to maybe season five and quit. We're the Flash. We're the Flash. <laughs> no, we're I, canceled. <laughs> I watched all seasons. I forget how many there are. Nine, I want to say. I watched them all um, knowing that, like, after after three, it started going downhill. But, you like, mm -hmm. the first three were really good. So, like, four or five, you just you go with. And then you just start watching them after because I'm like, I just out of principle. I got to finish this. I started. Right. I have to finish now. You know, that that completist. Uh, yes, yeah. you know, or completion. Yeah. Anyway. I, I wouldn't I would not recommend. Yeah. Anything after five, honestly, it's yeah. just because they and you're thinking, I don't know if they I haven't read too many Flash comics. I mean, I, I read a decent amount, mm -hmm. uh, at least it was one storyline. So I'm I'm sure maybe they, they have this in the comics as well, but in the the show, every villain was just um they're faster than Flash. The, the whole season one is I need to go faster. Like every season one through nine is I need to go faster. I'm not fast enough, and then he becomes fast enough, and that's it. That's that's the that's the whole arch. You know, it's a tremendous arc. 
Yeah, and then even <laughs> one one season they had, and I forget his name, like the thinker or something like that. It mm-hmm. was it was like a not a speed based one. At least that's what it's supposed to be. And then I was like, oh, that's gonna be good because somehow he's gonna use his intellect to fight he, to fight off Flash, or, or Flash the speed's not gonna matter, you right. know, or something like that. No, he still ended up like somehow being a speedster or, or well, something. Yeah. Like that. It didn't it, like it, it didn't even work. So, and Regardless. you know, the, yeah, he he was able to run fast enough. Yeah, yeah, that's so. he, he's faster now because <laughs> of love or something. I don't know. Oh, the love it makes yeah. us all faster. I, I guess I don't know. I tell you what, if, if you get enough love though, you can figure out how to slow it down a little bit. That's what I that's what I hear. That's all right. Good good advice. <laughs> good advice from Greg. Um, so up to speed on. X Men ninety seven. Um, anything that's maybe not genre that you checked out in the last week or so? You know what movie I started watching last night that's been out for a long, long, long time, but I have not seen it fully. Is uh, The Martian? Oh With yeah, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. What what uh, is that on? That's on. No, I just said it was like right? you know. I mean, I, I don't. know, Maybe it is. I, I ended up it buying it. Honestly, it probably oh. is on Max, but it's only like five bucks, so whatever. Yeah. So, um, oddly enough, you know, that is, uh, the Martian starring Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I watched a movie starring his best friend, Ben Affleck. Okay. I'm curious. Uh, it, it was Ben Affleck and what the heck, uh, it has JK Simmons in it. Um, the, the, account, the accountant, the accountant. Okay. That's a good movie. I knew it. And, and I, w- I knew the name cause I have it written down, but I was trying to yeah. think of the, uh, that, actor who plays the female lead i couldn't think of her name to save my life so not important i mean it is. she was in <laughs> pitch perfect and oh. other stuff you know who i'm talking about the attractive one yeah yeah um brie 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 allison brie no no it's, it's an allison brie type though uh yeah this is what i'm doing i'm i'm, I'm sorry fred i'm googling uh, <laughs> I can picture, uh, picture her in my in my Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick, yes, yeah, yes. John Berthal's in the movie as well. John Lithgow, um, <laughs> Doctor Greg Westheimer. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, I I'd never seen it. I I'd heard this like, oh, this you know, 2016 Ben Affleck movie is a surprise hit on Netflix or something like that, and I I enjoyed the heck out of it. You know, I thought yeah. it was I thought it was really great. Um, and and as I as much as I hate to like admit it, I saw the twist coming at the end where we find out that John Bernthal's character is Ben Affleck's character's brother. Yeah, you know, like I they made that a little. It's when you started getting more like the training mm-hmm. uh, montages of their youth, I was like, that's a little. Yeah, yeah, a little, little uh, easy. So I watched that, and then are you a Beatles fan? They're fine. Do, have you ever heard of the movie Yesterday? No. no. Okay, so um, I know you love mu- or movies with music in them, um, but yesterday is is um, I don't want to call it like a fantasy movie, but because I think we we think of fantasy, we think of like Lord of the Rings. But in yesterday, uh, there's a world like a, a, an odd worldwide phenomenon where the entire world loses power for like 15 seconds. And this one guy's riding his bicycle at the time. He's a musician. He gets hit by a bus, um, lives to tell his tale. But when he, you know, he, he wakes up, he out of the, he's in the hospital. He makes a Beatles reference and his friend's like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Uh, so he's, he, he's like, you've, have you heard, let me play the song. Have you heard the song with his piano or guitar or whatever? Like, no, that's a really great song. Never heard before. And, and he's fancies himself as a, a songwriter. So basically he starts, record like playing in front of audiences and things like that all the beatles hits you know like like i have heard this movie yes yeah and and i just kept waiting um he gets a like a big record deal uh you know he goes on tour with ed sheeran for reasons uh (laughs) um and and he's there are you find come to find out in the course of the movie you know spoiler i guess for it's a few years old there are two other people who like recognize the music like Oh, we're you know, so glad that you're putting the music out there. But it's not just the Beatles music, like Oasis. Uh, uh, you know, it's like he's trying. He mentions Wonderwall, and they're like, "Don't know what you're talking about." Um, he asks, you know, he he lives with his mom because he's a struggling musician, 
and or mom and dad. And uh, so he asks for a, a Coke and they bring a Pepsi. He's like, uh, or, we don't have any Coke. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, so Coke's gone, Oasis, the Beatles. Um, you know, so it's, it, I was waiting for like the moment where he'd wake up or the when the rest of the world would wake up. Yeah. And spoiler yeah. alert. Never happened. <laughs> He's serious because because that, that's what you expect in those type of movies. Yeah, he gets to, you know he he's performing all over the world, and then all of a sudden there's a lightning strike, and right. you know the people start really oh wait we already know about the Beatles and all this guy's yeah, a fraud or, or something ex- happens exactly, and and he actually he leaves uh he's he's on stage uh and and he's like uh, I gotta say that like none of this music's mine. Um, it, he meets a living John Lennon who, you know, because he li- never became a star, he, he was never, you know, killed, uh, in, in New York. So he meets him. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, Oh, I'm a painter, you know, something like that. Right. Um, he's like, ah, these, these songs weren't written by me. They were written by these four guys and, you know, Paul, George and John and Ringo. And, and, uh, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, but <laughs> you know, like the, <laughs> the music doesn't come back. It, <laughs> um, Fred says, uh, in that world, was there still Greg and John and Mike? John, of course, from the Five Heart Podcast. If not, I don't want to live in it. Um, to the best of our knowledge, yes. Yes. So stay with I us. I remember Fred. it. Yeah. Good times. Good. You remember this guy who came out with these songs randomly? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I watched those two, and uh, I've been watching a few documentaries. Um, the Nickelodeon Kids, I Quite think it's called like, Quiet on the set. Yep. I've been watching that. that. I'm a couple episodes in. It's unfortunate. I mean, like it's, it's unfortunate from, you know, from my perspective, I imagine it's very traumatic uh, for the people who lived it, but you know, uh, there should never be a, uh, uh, an abuse of, you know, from a person of uh, power or, or authority. Um, The first episode or two is just like this Dan Schneider guy who, um, you know, the allegations, He's still alive. He's he's denying them all. Like a, a statement from his attorney says that Dan Schneider, you know, refutes these claims, or he never um, uh, discriminated on basis of gender. Blah blah blah. Um, but you know, it's like there there's making really uncomfortable like working conditions. We come, to, you know, I'm I'm not there yet, but through clips and things like that, because this is I think the entire series is available now on Max. But um, come to find out that like there's really heinous like you know sexual abuse. Uh, that was taking place. There was one story, I think in episode two, where it's like a production assistant or something, some 25 year old guy uh, was working on w- with some extras on a show and struck up, you know, this is early days, I guess, of AOL struck up email, blah, blah, blah. And everything was, you know, mom was aware of the conversations that were happening by email. It was all innocent and professional. And then she goes on to tell the story that uh, one day she's like, my daughter's just sitting at the computer and all of a sudden she turns everything off, gets up and goes to a room and what's going on. She's like, there was, he sent me an email, me a picture of himself jerking off. And you know, she didn't use that language, but, uh, uh, and said, I wanted you to see this. And then I'm you know, like, and she's 11 or 12 at the time. I mean, it's just like, it's really gross and obscene. So, yeah. Uh, all right. What other documentary are you watching? A much better, much lighter, okay. I should say, one, and that's the Steve Martin documentary on Apple TV. Okay, okay. It's a, it's called, I think it's called a, a documentary in two parts because there was then, which is like his rise, mm-hmm. uh, and then there's the now, which is his now, which I'm only a few okay. minutes into that one. So, yeah. Um, have you read anything heinous? <laughs> uh, just been chipping away more at that uh, rise of apocalypse. Okay. Uh, so still working on it, but, but I get anything. I got stuff, Mike. Okay. I'm, what you get? I, I'm done with my phone. I'm going to move it to the side. Uh, for the first time since the end of January, I went to Twilight Comics in Swansea, Illinois. Oh, nice. And I cleared out uh, my pole folder, which included some comics for uh, Garrett. And we also okay. got him a uh, youth age eight to 12 trade paperback that's called an ants story. Okay. Because, you know, he's interested. Why in not? Bugs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the stuff that I got is, you know, it's real nice because it's the completion of uh, some things that I have been reading. Uh, so we've talked about this in the past. I'm trying to make sure I get these in order that I want. Nope, there we go. Um, 
So we have talked about uh, Gargoyles. So I have Gargoyles 12, which is the end of this arc. Oh, okay, okay. Got an ending. Good, good. And I have Gargoyles Dark Ages 6, which is the end of that arc. So All right, so we got the ends now. Got the ends. Um, and I've got some beginnings, but let's kind of back up a little bit here. So I have uh, Superman, and I've been enjoying this uh, run on Superman Dawn of DC, uh, the Lex Luthor Revenge Squad Strikes. So there's okay. Superman okay. 11. Uh, and then some tie-ins to where this story is going. Uh, one is Action Comics number 1064. This is the beginning of the House of Brainiac. Uh, you might actually appreciate this. Brainiac creates an army, and I don't know how well you can see it there, of Lobos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is um, a new crossover event, and I know it crosses over because look at this guy. That's a Green Lantern comic for the first time in a while. But it's a tie-in uh, with the House of Brainiac. And that all leads to Superman 12, which is a race against time. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, to save Lex Luthor. A lot of DC. A lot of DC there. And let's switch uh, to the other side, shall we? Oh, let's go. Let's go. Of course, these are not in order because that's my phone. Um, but we have, as you know, with beautiful covers from the one and only Alex Ross, we have the immortal Thor. We have okay. the Immortal Thor 7. We have the Immortal Thor 8, which is uh, Thor and his mother Gaia, okay. which is a departure from what we've been led to believe, that it's Frigga, Freya? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and that, then we that, have... That friggin' Freya. That friggin' Freya. And we have, uh, with a nice homage to some classic uh, Thor... Comics there, we have number nine. Ooh. So. Which I believe is a follow-up to Thor 8. Yeah, that's what I said. I have 7, 8, 9. I know. But... Oh, I see. You're being funny. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, and last but not least uh, that, uh, that I collected uh, was Grim number 16. They're on 16 now. Okay. They're on 16. It All took right. a few months for them to get from 15 to 16, but they made it. All is right in the world as much as it can be. I think I have to see what Grim I'm on. I know I have it up here, but I don't feel like reaching for it. But I don't, I don't think it's cl- I think maybe 13 or something like that. I can't remember. 9, oh, 10, something that's like that. Fair. Yeah. Um, hey, you I, do you, friend. You do yeah, you. Yeah. I only got two books. Um, but I got from you, James. You don't, ha- you don't have to hold them up. Okay. I'm ready. So from James Tinney in the fourth, I have The Woods. Right there, which I am about quarter of the way through. That's volume one, of course. And this story, it, it, uh, I mean, you can tell on the, on the, on the back as, as well if you read the back, but it essentially like this entire school basically is teleported to another planet. And oh. then there's like a, a war on the other planet. And they're, they're teleporting very quickly to the story. It's not like, like you, it's like okay, the first five pages are here's the characters, and then bam, this event happens, and then you're on another planet, ah. right? And also, do like that Jeff Lemire um, said something about him because I like that guy. And then the other one I have, which I am just started that one kind of is uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and I specifically picked this one out because this is the one that James Gunn said he's basing, or this is. He's using this as a reference for his Supergirl movie, which I think is also called The Woman of Tomorrow, actually. Not mm. percent. But have you ever read any Supergirl movie or uh, comics? I don't think so. Okay. So neither have I. This is the first one I've read. And I, at first I was thinking, like, if, if you would have asked me what a Supergirl comic was, I probably would have said, okay, it's just going to be just like a Superman comic. You know, um, he's, you know, at the she's at the daily plan or maybe they call it something else. And, you know, it's basically just, they just take out Superman and put Supergirl in. That's, that's kind of what I'll figure very, very earth. They can do earth based stuff and everything. Well, this one starts off and I couldn't really tell. Cause I'm like, okay, is it like, is it a medieval type of thing? Is it because she has the sword because she has a sword and, and, and (laughs) in, yeah, well, well that, and like when you're, when you're reading, it's like, okay, this is, they're clearly not, it's not today. It's happening. Right. 
Well, you come to find out that basically she had left Earth and that she flown to this other planet for like it was her birthday and stuff like that. She wanted time away. But it got me thinking because so far what I've read and, and again, this this might change, but it's all off worlds. And I'm like, that's kind of what I want a Supergirl movie to be now. Like, mm-hmm. I want it to be I don't want it to be on Earth at all. You know, I don't it'd be, it'd be because if you want to differentiate Superman and Supergirl, that's the way to do it. Like Superman's on Earth. He's doing he's saving. He's saving Earth. You know, she's off world somewhere. And eventually right. they, can, they can meet and stuff. But so far, it's actually a pretty interesting uh, book. And I'm hoping to have it done sometime soon. Um, I'm working feverishly here, uh, to answer Fred's question, uh, because Fred says, will Supergirl look like that picture, uh, or a 14 year old boy? And for the upcoming movie that, uh, she will be, um, portrayed in the Superman. Well, I guess if I recall, it's just Superman, uh, movie, yeah. uh, be played by Millie Al- Alcock. Alcock, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, most I think recognizably and perhaps most famously, um, she was on uh, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. So, uh, here's a picture of Millie, maybe. There we go. Sorry, sorry, Fred. This is an unexpected question. Uh, so there's Millie, um, a little longer hair, I guess, if you want to nitpick, but. Uh, Millie has been cast as Supergirl in the upcoming James Gunn, Peter Safran, Safran, uh, uh, Superman, DC, E, DCU movie, universe, whatever. So. There she is. Fred says, Google your ass off tonight, Greg. We're all friends here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and Fred says, for modern audiences, they'll have Supergirl of tomorrow be girlfriends with She-Ra and tell He-Man he sucks and he'll be stupid. <laughs> in the third. I don't know. I'd, I'd watch the Supergirl and She-Ra movie. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't disrespect He-Man, though. You know, um, That's all I'm saying. All right. Bye, Look, and, and honestly, He-Man would be kind of a third wheel in that situation, you know? I feel like. You know? I mean, I'm pretty sure that she is his cousin anyway, so probably. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, well, we mentioned Grimm, mm-hmm. which is, of course, written and has been written for all 16 issues by uh, our dear, close personal friend and past mm-hmm. guest on this very show, Ms. Stephanie Phillips. And we knew her way back when uh, she was just writing stories of, of you know, of her family. You know, the, the Butcher of Paris is where it sounds. It's not necessarily her family, but she her family was tangent- tangentially related to that story of. Uh, uh, a man among ye, uh, the descendant, um, just so much that she has put out in the world. And one of the newest things that she's put out while we're talking comics is uh, it was announced earlier this week. She said on, I want to make sure I get my date right. Couldn't get the gra- uh, picture of this, but this was just two days ago. Very excited to finally be able to say I'm writing Phoenix and Phoenix, by the way, it looks like this. Um, a new ongoing coming this July from myself and Alessandro uh, Mirak. Huge thanks to Annalise Bisa for allowing us to take Gene on this cosmic journey and Yasmin Putri on the covers. So Phoenix is coming back, y'all, and it's one of um, a few X titles that we're going to be seeing uh, coming out this summer. So I look forward to it. Looks really mm-hmm. good. I mean, I, we and, don't know much about it, but I, I, I love Stephanie Phillips' writing and the artwork. Just on that, it looks amazing. Right. Uh, now, we mentioned that that's not the only X stuff we're getting. Uh, we're also getting X-Force, uh, which is the world is broken and Forge knows how to fix it. I, I'll be honest with you. Until we got to X-Men 97, I didn't know a whole lot about Forge's powers because in the OG cartoon, we only saw him in the future when he's a little older and he's a hell of an inventor. But apparently that's just what he does is yeah. he can make anything. Uh, so, uh, Forge is going to lead X Force again from the ashes, a new beginning in this July. And at the same time, uh, we're getting 
NYX. Five mutants alone in the city. Welcome back to the real world because you can't go hiding on Krakoa anymore. Uh, so NYX also all three titles coming July twenty uh, or July of twenty twenty four. So this July, a few months out. Are those shows or comic books, by the way? Those will all be comics. Okay, I hundred percent thought those were shows. I said them to you, and I I didn't read the the article. Uh, I thought they were for sure shows. I'm like, oh wow, okay. But also, comic books are also great. You know? Yeah, because we got to be able to read. Yeah. I look. I enjoy. I enjoy comic books. <laughs> Greg said, tangentially, this is some kind of alternate universe shit. This is what happens when he has a second to speak. <laughs> I, Wait, Fred, I wish, I wish other Chatterfields could be, could be around to see what, like, actually, you know, what in control Greg looks like. Because things have changed over on the Five Heart podcast uh, slash show in the last few months. So. <laughs> okay, now I'm, now I'm curious. On Five Heart, do you not speak the most? Not anymore. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it, it, not to, and, and the show, the dynamics, great, and I, I, I play the role of the, you know, the I almost say petulant child. Um, Fred, would you say that that's a pretty good uh, description for me on Thursday nights as a petulant child? But you know, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll, uh. uh uh, the the newest co-host uh, Minnie, she has a format and she takes a nice outline of everything we're going to talk about that week and she doesn't like it when you stray off of and by the way i'm not speaking out of turn or or, or you know speaking out of school if she were here she knows i'd say the same thing we're not you know we joke about it all the time um yeah <laughs> oh that, that kind of makes me feel bad he says that i've been relegated to the sitcom dad um no oh, damn i that actually makes me think about that now. So I don't want to be that buffoon, uh, but apparently that's the role I play now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Fred says I'm to, I'm supposed to take you with me because you're my muse. Uh, to the five, I wouldn't. I know nothing about whatever they talk about over there. But you went to a game. I did go to a game. Look, I and I really enjoyed that game. Yeah. Besides the freezing cold. Besides the freezing cold. <laughs> Greg falling Not asleep me. driving home, but besides that. I didn't fall asleep driving home. You can't fall asleep driving home and, and keep it between the, the lines, Mike. Uh, no, the game was game was really really fun. Um, so, I would I would definitely go to another one. But um, and and to that to to Fred's, you know, this one being a little bit more punny, um, but you'd be my muse and I'd be your silent Bob. Yes. Well, no, no, you silent? No. That's, that's true. Well, on, on the yeah. five heart, you know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so here we go. Um, <laughs> uh, Fred says, uh, you're meaning me, Greg, not yeah. a buffoon. Oh, I'll speak out there. Hell, Mike, it, it, you'd be fine not knowing anything on there. I, I, I feel like Fred's going to send me a message and be like, 86 <laughs> abroad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, there's some oh, um, things that we've watched. Uh, I mean, we I think we've covered all the comic stuff for yeah. now. Uh, but things that we watched, Mike, did you watch WrestleMania 40? Oh yeah. Um. Okay. So I did watch some of the matches because I have Peacock, and why mm -hmm. not? You know, I spend six dollars a month on it, and I barely watch it. But it's only six dollars a month, so I think or seven. Right. Regardless, yeah, I Sunday night I watched I think the main event from Saturday night and maybe one other one. I can't remember. The main event was the the tag team match with Rock and Roman versus uh Cody and Seth. So I watched that and then after that was done, then it was, I think, about time for the main event for the Sunday night one, which mm -hmm. I watched. I think I watched a couple other matches, and I can't remember. I fast-forwarded through a lot. <laughs> right. I, I'll, I'll say this. I actually watched both the nights. Um, started Saturday a little bit late, uh, mm -hmm. but still, you know, like the fact that I had roughly eight hours, I think, of wrestling on over the two nights. I mean, now, yeah. granted, it only affected the family for the first couple of hours each night, and then they, you know, would, would all go to bed. But like, like, all right, that's that's not too bad, you know. Yeah, I I didn't get 
near the pushback as, as I thought I would. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I hadn't been, I'll, I'll say this. I have not sat down and like watched regular wrestling programming in years. Yeah. Same. But, but I follow it from a distance, you know, like, you know, mm-hmm. through, uh, not YouTube, YouTube next clips, but like social media clips and, you know, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, so I knew, I knew about finishing the story. I knew about the rocks return. I knew about CM Punk's return. Um, and there were, I, I, I'll just say I was as excited for this WrestleMania as I have been for a WrestleMania in a, a really long time. So okay. I did, I did take the time to sit down and watch both nights mm-hmm. of it. And, um, you know, not all the matches went the way I would have hoped. I'm, I, uh, come to find out that I'm just a big, you know, I'm a big fan of the baby faces, you know, uh, even going back to like 25 years ago at the NWO, NWO are like the cool heels. Yeah. But I still wanted to see like Sting and DDP and oh yeah, you know, yeah. even the four horsemen and whatnot, team WCW uh, on the winning side. Um, and again, to, to that point, uh, you know, that they, told the story for so long with sting and, and Hogan and whatnot. Uh, so the fact that this has been a, a long story for Cody Rhodes, you know, to finish the story. And I'm not, I'm just talking about Cody. You can go back and talk about dusty all you want. And, and I, I don't mean that to be dismissive, but I was really invested in this, even from a distance. So uh, yeah. So I watched both nights and I had a feeling that Saturday night was getting in like this. And I was not wrong in yeah. that, you know, um, and because I knew, again, you got to stack the deck against, you know, your white meat baby face. Yeah, so, true, true. Um, you know, then then you get to Sunday and you have, you know, you, well, I guess on Saturday you had Sami Zayn winning, you know, as, as the underdog, which was a terrific match. And you had um, uh, Becky Lynch on the, on the downside, Rhea Ripley retains. And I'm a Becky Lynch fan. So, you, but, you know, you, mommy's on a roll. So uh, I don't know if I said that right. That's sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just the, I, I enjoyed the action. I enjoyed the storytelling. There were times when I would record raw back in the day that I'd flip through the matches because I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll see who won the match. But like, what what's the story that we're telling, you know, around the 13 minutes or whatever. Um, so we get to Sunday night and, you know, Fred says, um that here he says mania 40 i gave up on wwe again around 2021 but i hear the overbooked main event for night two was at least exciting and fun and i'll say this and fred i'll put the picture up here so you can see uh not only did cody Rhodes overcome all odds and finish the story um but yeah you said you have uh kevin owens out there I, I don't know. There's a big gap between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. So I don't know if, if there's somebody missing there, but Sami Zayn and Jey Uso. And I'll say uh, wrestling fans on whatever, you know, review site said that the Jimmy versus Jey Uso match on Saturday night was like a 2% approval rating. I enjoyed it. I wish there were less super kicks in wrestling because I'm about super kicked out. And I said that to a uh, best friend of the show, Josh, uh, back in the day or not back in last week, not back in the day. Um, but like, Super kicks have gotten to the point where it's like a punch. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but when you have two guys whose finisher is kind of the super kick, we just saw a lot of them in that match. Uh, but uh, Jey Uso won. You got Randy Orton, who's the St. Louis boy, uh, LA Knight. And yeah, so um, Cody Rose finished story. You had uh, Undertaker. You had The Rock in that match. You had the, the rest of the bloodline. Um, but you just had a feeling. And I think I, I know I talked about it with Josh, um, but I'd heard this from other people, so I'm definitely not – saying that I'm the smart one. Um, But a few weeks back when rock made uh, Cody Rhodes bleed his own blood, uh, you know, they had a picture of the trailer bus or something. And it had uh, John Cena and Steve Austin on it. And their speculation that that undertaker spot was to go supposed to be Steve Austin, but they couldn't make the deal. Um, But at the end of the day, Cody Rhodes is your undisputed champ a, a, a tremendous ovation when that happened. Uh, and I'm going to put one more. This is, I just saw this picture online. I'm like, man, that's a beautiful shot of WrestleMania. So uh, kudos to Philadelphia. I mean, I heard that Saturday night was like in the forties 
uh, for Mania. Yeah. So um, eventually they'll stop having it on the East Coast in April in open air stadiums like that. But uh, uh, yeah, so I did. I basically I, the only reason I brought up WrestleMania is for whatever reason. I was more drawn to this than I had been. I mean, I tried to watch Royal Rumble every year because of the the uh, surprise factor, the surprise factor, yeah. the unpredictability, I guess, from from my standpoint. But uh, I don't usually sit down for WrestleMania, and I no. definitely don't usually do it for two nights. So uh, kudos to WWE. They they got me. They sucked me in and uh, um, had, had an enjoyable time watching it those two nights. So uh, that's 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 you know, kind of going back. That's all the things that i've watched i think mike i think that's the same for me all right well in that case we can move on to some news and some notes okay and we have some of those news and notes and uh i'm going to get them to you they are brought to you by my slow computer um so here we go we had a trailer for joker i'm just gonna call it joker 2 because i don't know fully i do fully i do I think I that's just you just have to say it with confidence and then people are gonna be like, yeah, that's probably how you say it. Um, by the way, I did. I, I did watch the trailer finally and I am still underwhelmed. Yeah, I know you are um, a huge fan of musicals. No, I think I was I, I didn't think I mean, they we've known it, it's going to be a musical for a while now. They they, they very strongly hinted at that, if, if not straight out said it probably a year ago or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think pretty much it was kind of assumed, especially when Lady Gaga was cast as, as Harley Quinn. Yeah. So, so I guess they're calling it a jukebox musical is what I, the term mm-hmm. that I've, I've heard, which is that they're taking well-known songs or more modern songs maybe, and putting a spin on them, I guess. But I, so I still have not seen uh, the original Joker and oh. yeah, I still have not watched it. Just, I mean, you you didn't really give a good review of it, like nothing that's made me like, oh, I want to check this out. Okay, now I now it 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 did very well mm-hmm. and and very well critically received, and so maybe I'll check it out eventually. But this one, which oh by the way, I know I'm in the minority with this because this one is though this trailer is apparently also very well received and everybody's liking it, talking about how great it's going to be. But I'm just like, eh, okay. I, I just going back to the original Joker, which was what twenty nineteen. Does that about right? I mean, has it been that long? That's about right, yeah. Maybe yeah, twenty nineteen. Um, Perfect. That's why I sounded right. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, uh, Fred is, is Joker two a musical? Uh, yes, uh, it is. Movies are legit. Corporate America. Oh, it's good. Let's <laughs> let's mess it up. Let's mess it up. Um, Honestly, yes, that's what uh, that's what we've heard is that Joker two. The electric Boogaloo is going to be. <laughs> Might as well uh, call musical. it that. <laughs> it's essentially musical. And and my having before I ever watched Joker, mm-hmm. um, which I think I probably bought it for Amazon Prime during the pandemic. Like I didn't yeah. go to theaters and watch it. Uh, I had reservations. You know, I was like, are we going to be glorifying, not glorifying mental illness, um, but glorifying a a villain? Yes. You know, because at the end of the day. In every scenario, whether it's Joker, whether it's, uh, you know, by, by Joker, I mean the movie Joker, or whether it's mm-hmm. Heath Ledger in uh, uh, a Dark, The Dark Knight, or Mark Hamill. I mean, Joker's chaotic evil. Yes. There's, there's no rhyme or reason. He just wants the world to feel pain, I feel like. So, so I felt like, before, having not seen the movie, I felt like this movie is going to glamorize and, and maybe, uh, try to empathize with yeah a villain with a, with right a murderer you know and i'm like mm, i don't i don't know if that's and having watched it i felt like my concerns were validated mm-hmm. so am i going to be going to uh see joker uh follow it follow it whatever joker that's right follow it follow it joker follow it yep. <laughs> um see so you do it with confidence and then and then you're like oh yeah yeah follow it that's probably it uh so I'm not going to see it in theaters. I'll, I'll say that right now. Um, yeah. And if it if it pops up on Max and I don't have to pay additional for it, then I'll I'll tune in. And, but it has nothing to do with the music. It's just you know. And and how do you have the Joker without having Batman? That's that's another part. You know, like they they lean more into Arkham and things like that. But you can't have Joker without Batman because Batman is the element, at least 
you know, I think in most cases, Batman's some go back to the killing joke and Batman's almost responsible for Joker being the Joker, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, by the way, Fred loves this. Uh, awesome. Mike, I call everything two electric boogaloo three is either the final insult or the search for content. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's that's the running joke. Yeah, everything too is electric boogaloo. I'm not over the three. I'm, I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna try to use the three final insult one. That love it, love it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna give uh Joker Father de Trois. De- Father de Trois, yeah, Father de Trois. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, or Joker to the electric boogaloo. I'm not gonna give it an endorsement. Uh, but if if I can watch it without having to put any more shekels down, then that's what I'll do. If I can watch it and know when the dumb musical parts are coming up so I can fast forward through it, I'll probably do that. Like if that's I would I would watch Joker and then I would then I would follow it up with that. Like if you watch Joker fa la la um <laughs> first, I said, Mike, there's it's it, it, there's musicals, musical numbers, yes, but the story's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Then I'll go, okay, I'm gonna watch Joker, and then I'll watch other Joker. And fast forward through the I'm a joker now. <laughs> or whatever they're gonna do, you know. I don't know, but that that that's not the jukebox musical because that's an original song. That's and I true. really I really feel like you should uh, get out the, the the guitar uh and and you know that was the full song right there. Song. Oh, oh, no, okay. no, that was that, that, that was the that was the finished version right there. Uh Fred says, I'll see it on five dollar Tuesdays at the theater down the street, then I have more money for booze plus the booze I sneak in. <laughs> That, you know what? Not a bad idea. You know. All right. So now the homework is for Fred because we know he'll see it. For all right, Fred, take a little notepad and, and like pen and paper and write down the the time spots for all the music, and then we can tell Mike be like, all right, Mike, hit mute or fast forward to, to these parts. And there you go. We'll put Fred to work. That's what we like to do here. We like to take our viewers and and uh, make them do things. That sounds bad. I apologize. That's, that sounds very much like a quiet on the set, and that's not what I'm about. So, <laughs> um, all right. So that's Joker. Uh, Mike, did you watch Heroes back in the day, like the first good run? I did not. Really? Nope, not at all. I, I mean, I knew about Heroes. it. Um, I don't think I had uh, cable at the time. It or... was on CW. Okay, I don't think I had. Uh, I think, wh- when did it come out? Because I'm pretty uh, sure during that 2006. Run, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, 2006. No, that's I. That's no. I did. I did not watch it, regardless. But um, yeah, I, I've so heard. I heard good things about it. I'll, I'll say this. Um, we all know and, and appreciate how good Firefly is. Yes, the first season of Heroes is one of the best. I think seasons of television. Oh, okay. Um, it's, I think where they went wrong uh, is they, they, I don't want to say they got too successful, but like, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's also like, it'll mess with you. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into uh, this, but if you have the CW app, I think you can watch it for free. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It might be. Yeah. Um, but it, it's worth a watch. It, it's worth that first season, I mean, look, if you're a, a completionist, if, if you like to finish things, uh, then you're going to... I've not watched the first attempt at the reboot or, or you know, the continuation, that, that series that they did, or the season that they did a few years back. I've not watched that, but I have seen the the first run of it. Um, and again, the there's the first season, and then there's like seasons two, three, and four kind of like... Uh. So, yeah, yeah, but uh, but I know, like I I should if it's on Amazon Prime, I should I should watch it. Please do, I will. Well, at least for a season. That's all we ask. Yeah, um, and then Star Trek, an or like a prequel to the 09 Star Trek that had Chris Pine. Okay, uh, but that is movies uh, scheduled to come out sometime next year, and I didn't even know they were making a star trek prequel movie but uh they start filming it later this year uh i will say this um i you know mike that i have a special place in my heart for that 09 star trek movie yes and you know why it's the first movie you ever saw (laughs) no but uh 
Uh, it was the first movie that my wife and I saw as a married couple. We actually saw that on our honeymoon. Classic honeymoon in in an IMAX in Nashville, Tennessee. That's well. When you're when in Nashville, do Nashville things, I guess. Which is good. Well, well we, we got married. Um, you know, I, I don't mind saying telling the story. The day we got married, our bank account was in the red. Um, that, look, that's you're a lucky man. Then a lot of <laughs> say that right now. I said our. I didn't say my. I said our. It yeah. was a joint effort. <laughs> But still, still, the fact that she's not like, eh, you know what? I was in radio at the time, so she knew. Yeah, she knew what she yeah. was getting into. Hey, um, I mean, look, that's that's love. Yeah, I won her over with my charm. That's right, charm and biceps, charm and biceps, and yep. uh, I think they've both gone away now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's never. Mind. Uh, but uh, through the kindness of friends and family, when we started opening up the gifts. Uh, they're like, oh, hey, we're back in the black. <laughs> uh, but when we went, so at, go back. We'll be celebrating uh, 15 years next month. Uh, but 15 years ago, my mom and dad had a timeshare uh, or timeshare service. So they could pick, like, we want to be in this you know, tourist city and this weekend. So we were able to stay in Nashville and in Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area for free. Ooh, no, uh, okay. So we were kind of honeymooning on a budget. Like we went to Dollywood, <laughs> uh, but when the couple of days that we were in Nashville, we walked around Opry Mills Mall on two different occasions. Instead of like we we we're gonna go to Andrew Jackson's home and like take the carriage ride all through, you know the and they're like that'll be thirty five dollars per person. Be like we're just gonna see ourselves we're, out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we chose going to see. Uh, Star Trek instead of going and having dinner at the Rainforest Cafe. So I'm just saying we've I come a know. long way. Yes. Yes. So, no. Are there any plans for next month? Are you guys going back to Nashville and, and this time you're going to go to the cafe? <laughs> no. I think if we were going to go uh, to Nashville again, and I think we will sometime, you know, uh, we'd go to see. So uh, they have like a, a replica Parthenon that i didn't even know about 15 years ago so I'd, I'd like to go see that maybe go do that andrew jackson uh ride um and see more of the sites so i I'll, I'll never forget this and, and fred will appreciate we went and had dinner at the wild horse saloon one night which is on the like the music strip or you know whatever like the uh zoot suit riot was playing if you remember them from yeah, the of 90s course i do yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, or no i'm sorry cherry pop and daddy's with Same the song thing. zoot suit riot <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, but, you know, we had had a nice meal, a couple of drinks, whatever, and we're walking back to the vehicle, which was, I want to say it was an 01 Jeep Cherokee. Nice. Jeep Cherokee Sport. Ooh. Um, and a guy comes up, and and he, he, he was, you know, panhandling, and he said he was trying to get home. I said, oh, where's home? And I don't have any insignia on my vehicle. It's, it's plain. I don't have anything. He's yeah. like, oh, I'm trying to get home to Nebraska. I was like, oh. <laughs> I said, I, I, I've, I've, you know, spent some time out in Nebraska. Let me, let me help you out. I gave him twenty bucks. I'm okay. pretty sure he spent it on booze. I, but that's what I would have done. So, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> um, I feel like it, it would have been well worth it. You know, to to help out your fellow man. Uh, Fred says, what am I doing? I'm going back to the Rainforest Cafe and doing this show live as, as Fred shits <laughs> on me in the comments. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. I can always count on you. Um, I don't know how the hell, why that got brought up. Why did that get brought up? Why did we go so far down that rabbit hole, Mike? Don't know. But what, oh, what, Star what Trek. We, yeah, Star Trek. Star Trek uh, prequel. To the reboot of something. Next year. Uh, yes, Here's sir. the thing. Chris Hemsworth is in Star Trek. He plays Chris Pines. He plays Captain Kirk's dad uh, for, uh, for a, you know, he's like for, I think the uh, Admiral's like, your father was uh, captain of the Enterprise or captain of the uh, vessel for 12 minutes and he saved his entire crew. He's like, I challenge you to do better. It's an underrated movie. I need to go back and watch it. Anyway, uh, I don't think they can get Chris Hemsworth 15 years later, you know, and have him look <laughs> much younger. So anyway, Star Trek uh, coming up. Hope you enjoy it, everybody. Um, 
and moving on. Mike, I want to dip our toes back into comic books one more time quickly before we go on to the main event. Okay. You remember this comic cover? Wolverine Uh, number one? Yes. Do you know that uh, in recent years with the ownership of Disney that uh, Marvel has been doing some Disney Marvel crossovers? I did not. Like last year, I'm not going to Google it because I should have been prepared, but last year it was like a famous Spider-Man cover, but it was uh, Mickey Mouse as Spider-Man, like under under a full. Yeah, yeah. uh, So this year, and and maybe there's going to be more. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I know DC did it because, you know, Warner Brothers and and there's the tie in with uh, Looney Tunes. And so uh, I think somewhere I have like Daffy Duck as the Green Lantern, you know, something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cover. But. So take that okay. and then check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It, isn't that just wild? That is the best. So, and um, I kind of want to read that now. What if Donald Duck became Wolverine? And it's, it's going to be an actual um, what if issue. Okay. So you'll be able to find it uh, on store shelves later this summer. So um, anyway, I just, that that caught my attention. I wanted to share that. I figured you'd get a, a chuckle out of it. So yes, Mike, are you ready for the main event? Let's do it. We have been doing this ongoing series now for, gosh, almost two months. Probably is that yep. about right. Um, mm-hmm. and what we do is, you know, how it started. If you're new to the show, is I found a random collage of of '80s movies, and the challenge was. You, you can only save three. Which three are you going to save? And so we played that game, and then we altered it um, moving forward. And so now what we've been doing is we pick a topic, and uh, we each select 15 of that topic. And we've done uh, 90s movies, 90s TV shows, Marvel, DC. You know, uh, we, we try to blend it and... Uh, but I pick 15 and Mike has to save five and Mike picks 15 and I have to save five. And this week, because there was no Fred last week to guide us mm-hmm. this week, we are doing fast food restaurants. Yes. And if you listen last week, we did say that we were going to go like odds TV shows because last week was 90s TV shows, but mm-hmm. kind of made an audible after the podcast and said, let's instead of odds, we might go, go re, we might visit that again. Um, let's go fast food places. So next yeah, Fred wasn't on last week. So we didn't, we, we didn't have a topic because um, his suggestion actually, I think was 90 sci-fi. And then we just said, Hey, instead of just sci-fi, let's go to 90s TV shows, make it more broad. Hey, here's a positive comment. Fred uh, says that his girlfriend enjoyed the serial and the 90s TV show one. So we did. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Well, hopefully make, she enjoyed make, this one. That's right. Uh, by the way, we mentioned prime video and invincible uh, is like the second half of invincible, but also fallout is on mm-hmm. prime video as well. And Josh, who's not watching the show, but he's messaging me on, on Facebook messenger. He says, how in the hell am I just learning about the fallout show? Well, and if you listened uh, to us, you know, you would probably know about it because we've discussed it in the past. Mm-hmm. So, and also I said, join the show. Like the, the, Come on. So he won't because he's a butt. Um, <laughs> who's going to go first, Mike? Who's who I want? I want you to choose the five. Yours? Yeah. So my okay. mine's on screen first. All right. So coming up on screen. Fred says that Mike made an audible. He does know football. Kind of put him on Thursdays. Probably less dead air. I'll, pre- I'll pretend I know a lot. I'm good at that. <laughs> and yeah, me too. Uh, all right. So these are the 15 restaurants. Uh, mostly fast food restaurants that yeah. Mike selected for me. And Fred, I think you're going to appreciate at least one Let's of, uh, of the choices. Um, okay. And Josh made it. How about that? Okay. Nice. Yes, of course. And yes, and yes Fred is here, uh, but he's over on, on uh, YouTube. And Josh says he can't get on YouTube for some reason. So this is great. That means that they're going to communicate, but they're not going to be able to see. So I'm going to have to read. <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll, Oh, yeah, you can read them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's put Mike's picks up for me. And here we. <laughs> Fred says, "Better have fucking Runza." Well, there you have it, Fred. I hope you're happy. Uh, 
Mike, I'll let you read for me the, the okay. choices you have made. All right. The, the, here's the, what you got to pick from. Church's Chicken, Runza, Taco Bell, Little Caesars, DQ, Portillo's, uh, KFC, Wendy's, Steak and Shake, Skyline Chili, Dairy King, Burger King, Pizza Hut, Culver's, and Racing Cane's. By the way, I just want to point out, I'm glad people know about Runza because I really had no idea what it was. I just wanted, I, I Googled Nebraska fast food oh. and that's what came up. Cause I'm like, I want, I want something like maybe Greg's like, oh my gosh, you this, I didn't even realize, you know, how'd you know about this? So that's why Runza's is on there. So. Excellent. Well, thank you so much uh, for a very uh, diverse list uh, right away. And, and I'm, I'm going to say this, I apologize for pissing people off. I've never had Portillo's, so I'm going to dump Portillo's. Okay. you If you ever get a chance, man, go for it. Okay. I, I yeah. think I did a quick Google right now, and I mm-hmm. think there's one in Springfield, Illinois. So if I'm ever up yeah. in Springfield. Uh, so no no offense to Portillo's. Uh, I'm going to dump Skyline Chili because I love chili, but the idea of putting chili on spaghetti noodles, I've got to 86 that. You can also put Skyline Chili on uh, – it's better on like as a chili dog. That's A, a cheese cone is what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Josh is now on YouTube, and again, he's talking to Fred. So <laughs> good, good. never mind the fact that there's an active show going on here. Right, you guys just have, right. your, have a conversation. Um, all right. I'm going to 86 Burger King. Uh, and look, I'll say this. I enjoy a flame broiled Whopper, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, or perhaps the next day, the flame broiled Whopper doesn't like me. That's fair. That's fair. So I, I'm going to get that. And here's the one of... Everything that I have ever said, this might be the hottest take ever. I'm going to dump Raising Cane's. Okay, that's fine. I that's find fine. their chicken fingers to be bland okay, and not terribly appealing. Um, And I said some, Josh wasn't there, but Fred was there. I said some pretty robust things last night on, on the five heart after I got a few yingling in me, so... Uh, this might take the cake. I don't know. Which ones am I saving? Uh, I'm going to save Runza because I have to. Okay. Uh, I have two Nebraska guys here, and if I don't, they're going to come knocking down on my door. Okay. Um, I'm going to – here's the thing. I love Dairy King. Mm-hmm. I'm going to save Dairy King. Uh, Josh and Fred don't know, and most of the viewers don't know about Dairy King. There are two, exactly two locations of Dairy King, and they're about 10 miles apart in, in the area where Mike and I grew up, went to high school, Yep, where – where I work, you know, so I get Dairy King once every few months. Um, the only, th- the only knock I'll say about Dairy King is they should, they, I mean, they have this much of a menu and they could yeah. probably have like this much of a menu. Like, yeah. They have a little bit too much, uh, but they have great ice cream. Their mm-hmm. fries are banging uh, and they have some really great double bacon cheeseburgers. So yes, agreed. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep Dairy King. I'm keeping yeah. Runza. Um, I'm going to keep Culver's okay. um, and I'm going to keep Taco Bell and I'm going to tell you why. Because I always go home happy when I go home with Taco Bell. Yeah. Uh, and I think the last one that I'm going to keep, it's down to, it's honest to God, down to two. Okay. But I think I'm going to go DQ. Fair. Very fair. And yeah. again, largely it's the ice cream influence. Okay. Okay. And and I don't think we included DQ. You remember uh, years back, Mike, when we did the uh, blind chicken tender taste test? Yes, we did have DQ at, at your old place. We did. Yeah, uh, but yeah. we didn't have. Um, well, we we had a few. We didn't have raisin canes. There wasn't no. one nearby. So, no. um, all right. So those Good are mine. Uh, by Thank the way, you. I I I was curious if you're going to go Wendy's for the baconator or not. Oh, that's good you know. Idea. And Wendy's has, I think Wendy's had better fries. I didn't grow up with Wendy's. I didn't have get Wendy's regularly until I was in college. Yeah. But when I did, it was that dollar menu plus a Caesar side salad. Okay. And the Frosties are good too. That's a good one. So yeah, I, I've yeah, got, I've too. got Runza, Dairy King, DQ, Culver's, and Taco Bell. Solid list. Solid Thank list. You. Thank you. Uh, Fred wants to know. What's Portillo? Portillo's? Portillo's. So they have, I know they have hot dogs there. And then they also have, um, God, what is it? Like Italian beef sandwiches, That, which is what I really like there. They're really good Italian beef sandwiches. Mm. Um, when I lived for a short time. Um, Chicago born chain for hot yeah, dogs, Italian beef sandwiches and more plus beer and wine. So there you go. They got yeah. that going for them. But they have amazing Italian beef sandwiches. Okay. Like really good. Um. 
let's see. Josh says there's a Dairy King out in Scotts Bluff, but it isn't that chain. Uh, for the probably not as good. No, it's it's a it's a subpar DK. Yeah. And let's see. We'll get to Fred's. Uh, I'll, I'll star Fred's list for now, and then uh, we'll come back here in a few minutes, Mike, and you can give your okay. list off of these. Okay. All right. So those are my five from the list that Mike gave me. Let's uh, let's show the list that I have for Mike. And I told Mike, I said, with a, with a few exceptions, this is very one color. I didn't realize the overwhelming majority of, of fast food logos carry this one color. So here we go. Okay. That is a lot okay. of red. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you, want to, do you want to read these? I'll read them. Uh, okay. So we got rallies or, you know, in some regions are called checkers. Uh, Del mm-hmm. Taco. Got to go to the, excuse me, the golden arches of McDonald's. Uh, Freddy's frozen custard and steak burgers. We have White Castle, Bojangles, Domino's Pizza, Hardee's. Jack in the Box, Five Guys, Burger and Fries. We have In-N-Out Burger, Arby's, Chick-fil-A, Taco John's, and Whataburger. Okay. So In-N-Out is going away because I've never had it. Heard great things about it. I haven't had it. Bojangles also haven't had it. Okay. I'll say this. Um, I There's Bojangles down in Marion. Okay. And I was told that they're like the best biscuits. Those biscuits mm-hmm. are dry and hockey puck like. So uh, okay, okay. I'll just right. say this: if given the choice, like I'd go and get my biscuits from KFC. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, I am gonna go. Even though I haven't been to this place in a while, but I enjoyed it when I was there. Mm-hmm. Is Freddy's? Yep. Um, and I know there's one. I think in Edwardsville, actually, close by here. In Shiloh. Uh, oh, is there one in Shiloh too? Mm-hmm. Um, so I need to go there. So I'm gonna go there. I'm also gonna go Whataburger. I've only been there once, and it was Same. when I was in Texas. Uh, yeah. I, the, the, the burgers were really good, but really what I enjoyed there the most, and I think we talked about this before, they had uh, a banana pudding shake. Oh, okay. It yeah. was amazing. It was like a one, that was like a limited time deal thing. Right, so right. Like a seasonal. See, yeah, kind of yeah. thing. But I'm, I'm still going to go Whataburger. Okay. Um, here's the thing. I want to go Jack in the Box, because why not get those late night tacos? I'm going to go Jack in the Box. Bold. Look, like Jack it. in the Box isn't isn't great, but their tacos are really good. Um, now, here's the thing: the Jack in the Box at in in my town is probably one of the worst for service. Fair. Like they constantly either like you go there and they you go through the drive through and they go that they're only taking mobile or DoorDash orders. Oh gosh. Yeah. Or like one time they just said like we're closed. I'm like, you guys are supposed to be open 24 hours. Like, uh, we had to clean or something <laughs> like that. I don't remember. Right. Regardless, still. Um, okay. Rallies. I I think I've had rallies, but I don't I don't think I had a great experience with it. Big Buford. If I remember correctly, and I only have a vague memory of this, I went to a rallies and the food was just like not very warm. I would say. Like it was lukewarm. Like they they made it and it was just sitting out for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's see here. So I got three. You know what? I'm. I keep looking at Five Guys. Look, Five Guys is expensive, but we're not. I'm not paying for this. I'm just saying I like it. So I'm going to put Five Guys on there. I have three burger places. Oh, <laughs> there's mainly burger places here. Del Taco and Taco John's. I've. I don't think I've ever been to. There's a Taco John's down in Marion. Okay. Um, I don't know if you think I'm going to Marion sometime <laughs> soon. I, oh, where is pretty far away? Um, okay, and then the other one I'm going to have to choose because I actually got it recently is Domino's Pizza. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, Josh, we'll give you a minute to select your five and put it in the comments. While we do that, we're going to hit up uh, Fred's five for this list. Okay. And Fred says, uh, uh, Freddy's Domino's as they got better. Five guys too expensive. Now taco John's. If I'm drunk, uh, the rest of these, yeesh. Uh, again, I mean, I get, like- I get Mike's list first and then I try not to duplicate. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at the same time I could pull five from here. I, and, uh, I've got a, a rallies and because, as you know, there's rallies right down the road from our my house. Yes. 
Uh, and I was very excited about that when we first moved. I'm like, yeah, rallies. The first time we got rallies, uh, the – and I'm going to hide your uh, – listen out, Fred. Uh, the burgers were fine, but the fries – like, their fries are so good that you can buy the fries, like, in your grocery freezer section and, right. and cook them up at home. And so I was like, I'm going to get those seasoned fries. This can best. And they were lukewarm, soggy, like they had been sitting in the oil. And I took about, I'm like, nope. Um, have had, I, I want to say, had, I've had many better experiences there since then. I mean, that okay. was almost eight years ago. Uh, but again, I still don't. Uh, ooh, what is rallies? Uh, it's a it's a little drive through burger joint, uh, yep. drive through or walk up. Um, let's see. I'm going to say, I think the big. There's probably one in Marion, by the way, just in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> uh, that's fine. You know, I, I'm not Googling that. I'm, I'm trying to find a picture of a big Buford to show uh, Fred. All right. You know, I like that. We're going to, we're going to use this one. All right. Hang tight, Fred. We're, we're, we're coming to save the day. Rallies. Nope. Can't do it. I was just so excited, but it's not the right type of uh, image because why would they just make a JPEG? I don't, I don't have time to run it through my Photoshop, you jerks. Um, all right, is, is this grand? Uh, can you can you do anything? Can you stall? Can you talk? Can you? Nah. <laughs> like no, this is way more entertaining. Let me actually, is... here while, while while you're doing that, I'll talk about the the latest Nebraska game. It was oh, okay. it was a tough one. You know, I didn't yep. think that the outcome would happen like it happens. But, but when it did. You, but when you have a couple, what I call warriors out there, you know, that work hard, but did they make the right decisions? You know, that's this what we really got to we really got to think about. And and going forward, what are we going to do? Right? Can we improve? Right? That's what a lot of people are asking us. Can we improve? <laughs> You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide that. <laughs> you did a great job there. There's the big Buford, or the triple Buford, uh, Fred. So again, it's just a big old burger place mm-hmm. with delicious food and the top notch fries. When you you can get them in your grocery store. So I, I felt like you get better burgers somewhere else. Yeah, like Josh Freddy. says, they don't call him co-host of the year for nothing. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um. All right, so let's. Let's put the list back up here. So I guess now I have to give my five. Yep. Uh, so my five would be Freddy's. My five would include Chick-fil-A. Okay. Um, my five would include rallies when they're good. My five would include Whataburger, although I've only yep. had it the one time, and it was a long time, but it was still good. Mm-hmm. And then my five would... Again, I don't have to pay for it, uh, but Five Guys. Yeah, see, Five Guys is great. It just and and I'll say this. Uh, so Fred may know. I know Josh knows of a Brian Toll, and that's not a name I expect you to know, Mike. But I used to podcast over on Coronation with Brian uh, for a number of years, and even to, from a site before that. And uh, when Ashley and I were out in California for a uh, Nebraska game slash vacation back in 2012, and we're sitting there eating in and out. And or, or no, I'm sorry, not eating. You know, we eating. Uh, I got it screwing up the whole time on that story. We were we were not on vacation. That's where we had In and Out. We were at the Five Guys in Fairview, and you know they they give you the burger and then they give you like a sack full of fries. Yeah. And Ashley couldn't finish her fries, so I ate my burger, my fries, and all, the rest of her fries. And I told that to Brian. He's like, "Bullshit, no, you didn't." I was like, "Yeah," and Ashley confirmed. She's like, "Did." De- de- Brian was impressed. As well I paid. I prayed the price down the road. So yeah. So I apologize for screwing that story all up. <laughs> Quite all right. All right, um, Josh. I don't think you ever gave us your five. Why would you bother? Um, I think he 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 told Fred his five. He's like, I like Freddy's, and I still hit a McDonald's. I like Jack in the Box when I visited my dad in Texas. Not big on the rest of these. We order Domino's often for because for a long time they were. I think he said the only delivery in town so yeah the only delivery here but even this tiny town has three better pizza places yeah there are definitely better pizza places all right Um, you're you're off the hook josh um all right let's get back to 
yours, Mike, uh, yep. so that you can you can tell us which five you would select. All right, I'm going. Uh, first of all, I have to go Taco Bell. I got Taco Bell today. <laughs> um, I'm also. I got to go DQ. My other is going to be very similar. I got to go DQ and DK. Mm-hmm. Yep. I gotta go. I gotta go Skyline Chili. Weird. Because well, look. First of all, if your cheese conies are amazing. Okay. Um, and also my dad was from Cincinnati, so I got I got to go. But they really Skyland Chili is good, and and yeah, cheese conies are amazing. Um, raisin canes I've never had. Little Caesars isn't bad; it's fine. I'm kind of the same with you as Burger King. I need one more. It's either Wendy's. Look, Runza. I'm sorry, I've never been to Runza before. Like I said, I just <laughs> you I literally googled <laughs> Nebraska fast food, and that was the one that came up. That was the that first was, one. That was just for us. Yeah, so, that was for you guys. And look, as much as Portillo's is really good, there's only one thing I get there, and I haven't had it in a long time. It's worth well, again if you're out somewhere that has Portillo's and you like Italian beef, get it. You know what? Just for the love of the baconator that I talked about, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Wendy's. You go double baconator? I feel like you have to, right? You can't go I less than a double. To. You know why? Why only give yourself a thousand calories when you can go for two thousand? You know, right. it's it's really all about uh, the and and. You know, I in the write up and people are like, what? So so we're talking about these fast food places uh, the day that I had my annual checkup with the doctor. Oh. And, he, and he's like, uh, I'm looking here. You now, first time I've ever met this particular provider, my old provider moved on a couple years ago. Uh, so it's been almost two years. Uh, that's a long story. I don't want to bore Fred with it. Um, he, he's going to run out of breadcrumbs uh but uh doc's like yeah your last blood panel said that your cholesterol was good but just barely so like i've got a uh i've got to get new blood work up uh uh, done probably first part of next week and he's like "Mm, you're almost 42 and this is your weight and he's like we could put you on some medicine i'm like do we have to basically you know he, he was uh um, Josh has to leave says we got a bail teething kid and wife and I still sick AF miss you all. Well, we miss you too, Josh. Miss go, you too, Josh. Bye. Go take care of Have yourself. Fun. Thanks. Thanks for jumping. No, no, yeah. I give Josh. Kiss. In. He likes that. He does that. He does. Um, but basically the doc's like, if you can grow it or kill it, it's okay. He's like, avoid the breads and the pastas and the oh, donuts. Yeah. And I'm like, we uh, clearly, you don't know me at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I was talking to somebody and they were saying that like, they don't think it's good that I don't go to the doctor. And it's not like I'm like anti-doctor or anything like that. Like I'll get my flu shot and I got, you know, other shots. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Yep. Um, but they're like, you should at least go and get, um, what is it? Like an annual exam or whatever. Right. Like, cause they're, they're free apparently with our, with our insurance. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, and, but here's the thing. I'm like, I know exactly what the doctor is going to say. The doctor is going to say you're overweight and you need to lose weight. That's what, that's what they're going to say. But you, know? you work out. So, you know, but, but here's out. the thing. Your, your weight is all distributed into, into your traps and tries and buys. You know, you're, you're not, you're there's not a lot down here. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, talking about my belly people no that's it's what's below the belly for all you ladies out there <laughs> but anyway, maybe, I'll, um, maybe i'll get an annual exam i don't know yeah i uh i need to find so, a doctor by the way sorry to interrupt no it's fine um i know so he, he's like if you can kill it or or grow it so i'm like all right so the problem is like I love cereal. Like I love breakfast. That's why we had so much fun uh, a couple weeks back with the breakfast cereal episode, but we're out of cereal. And Ashley's like, I got to run to the store. Do we need anything? I'm like, it's like, can you just get some eggs? And like, you know, so we'll do uh, tomorrow. I'm going to cook up some eggs and bacon or something like that. I mean, yeah, you kill bacon. I mean, you kill the pork, the pig, the bacon. So, um, Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Fred says real quick. Uh, my doctor said that my blood type is yingling. Uh, he actually, he's like, we want to stay away from the sugary sodas or sugary drinks. I said, I said, I made a conscious decision a few years back. I said, I could give up beer or I could give up soda. I said, I gave up soda. (laughs) 
Uh, now, Fred's selection from this uh, list for you, Mike, is he's got Runza, Churches, Culver's, Dairy Queen, which is the high school lunch, and that's it. Pizza Hut is a laxative, he says. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Don't you sometimes? Don't you need laxative sometimes? Look, you get to eat good food and, you know, and be regular care, the next day. Take care of business afterwards. You know, take take care of business. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, always a, a weird uh, feeling when a forty-something-year-old man is asking if you poop okay. It's like everything comes out just fine, Doc. Thanks. Maybe a I'd little be like too fine. fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How 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 often is too often? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, but anyway, that was our, our list, uh, for this week. And, and, uh, Mike, I enjoyed doing this part of the, I have an idea. Okay. Since we talked about it a little bit, uh, earlier. And I, again, I think there's an abundance. Of, I was concerned that we wouldn't have enough fast food places to choose from that were, you know, like without going to an in and out or what, like they yeah, yeah. have been mutually, uh, experienced. Yeah. But I think, and, and I'll let, Fred chime in and, and we'll take, get his take. Uh, and we have another viewer, so if they want to chime in as well. But we are in the post WrestleMania season. Okay. So what if we did pro wrestlers next okay. week? Okay. Now are we going just WWE? Are we going all you anything? can go you, you can go. go any, you know, the, the that's what I think is so nice about it. You can go as broad uh, as you want. So I think any pro wrestler okay. of any era. Okay. That um, sounds good. We, I want to make sure that we get since Fred's the the one who joins us and and is you know when when Josh is here he is of course but Fred's here beginning to end because he's a trooper. Uh, Fred, what do you think? Pro wrestlers, good idea. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. We'll just sit and wait for your uh, response. What if he laughs? We're just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, in the meantime, we can. Oh, uh, we can. I, I can sit here and I can read some comics to you, Mike. Okay, read to me. Perfect. <laughs> Page one. Go anywhere you want. I've been following it since 1983. So. Okay, excellent. All right, right, that's it. I don't have to read it now. So, yep. all right, that's that, that's the end of that experience or experiment. And um, Fred, looking forward to seeing y'all next week. Mike, looking forward to seeing you. And and uh, this is what happens when Greg has some notes. And although it probably put a little extra stress on the household, it didn't need to, but had some visual aids which fred said visual aids he could you know help me find a cure for that so <laughs> thanks thanks fred um so all right that'll do it for this episode of nerds united uh what is the criteria best wrestler i think it's just you know put 15 wrestlers out there and and uh choose, choose the five you like doesn't have choose, to be, choose the five yeah. choose the five to save yeah yeah this isn't like a mount rushmore situation nope. it's by gosh, if you're that big a fan of the honky tonk man, then he might make the list. Yes. Um, get an antibiotic for the visual aids, Greg. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I hope it added an, an extra element or dimension to the show for all of you viewers on uh, YouTube and Facebook. So if you're just listening to this on the audio version, we appreciate you too. And, and I believe you can no longer listen to it on Google play. So make sure that you subscribe on Podbean or Spotify or Apple podcast. If you have it, or just check us out uh, on YouTube. And if you're over on YouTube, make sure that you hit that like button on the video and subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you're made aware of uh, next time we set up the stream and I'm going to try to be better and have the stream set up more than like an hour and a half ahead of time. <laughs> uh, so you can plan accordingly, yes. but we've been doing it for uh, a few weeks now. Fridays at nine o'clock. I seem that seems to be an all right time. So um, we appreciate Fred. Fred says fun show. Uh, thanks. And see you next week. So uh, half makes it official. I guess we'll be back doing it live next week at uh, nine o'clock. Mike, let's do it. Unless you have plans. Nope. Perfect. I like how you were <laughs> ready to go with that one. Like, nope, not going to be. <laughs> so excellent. Well, for the co-host of the year, Mike Luther, I'm Greg Mahachko. This is Nerds United. We remind you each and every week on Nerds United. By the way, a jitterymonkey.com podcast, we remind you to be kind. And rewind. This is a production of the Jittery Monkey Podcast Network. For more jittery shenanigans, go to jitterymonkey.com.